guys another Rossi audio video and I am fucking whipped and whooped and exhausted um, I left Meridian uh, Mississippi about 20-25 minutes ago just finished up loading all the stuff that I bought at the uh, PV auction so um, the trip down was <laughs> Oh Lord, I'm, I made a wrong choice of road when going down here. I thought it was going to be easier to go I-55 and cut across, and I really regret doing that. Um, it was a nightmare of a road. <clears throat> going home now on a different uh, route, way better. Uh, about 12 miles longer but it seems to be faster um, like I said my, uh, my arms are like two feet longer after this I have a 15 foot U-Haul truck that I'm driving and uh, it's full it's full to the door, all the way, all, from the front to the back, from side to side, from floor to ceiling, it is full. I estimate, uh, my estimation is, um, if I'm going to guess how many kilos, I don't know, um, the uh, Black Widow boxes wasn't didn't weigh that much so they were easy then I would do them first but once I started doing all the pedals you know there's 1780 pedals and uh, well let me see there's 1788 pedals because there was two no it was eight loose ones eight loose pedals that was just in their little boxes so 1788 pedals and um, there was 10 pedals in each box in each master carton so you can uh, start doing the math of how many boxes I have back here and um, I did another thing wrong I um, should have gone to Penske and rented a Penske truck instead because they have a higher floor in the back so you can drive right up to loading docks. Eh. I love U-Haul trucks because they have a low floor thing, especially when you clean out storage units and, and stuff like that or when you have the ramp you can do whatever and it's nice but not when you go up to a place that has loading ramps. So, um, oh my lord, this road, Mississippi roads, I tell you, stupid. Um, so what, what, ha what I have had to do, because they couldn't use, you know, the, if I had a Penske truck, they could have just lifted up each pallet with a forklift and drove it straight on to the truck and we would have been done in like 10 minutes. It took me two hours, two and a half hours, maybe three hours. I don't know what the time is right now, but I think it's closer to three hours. Because I had to split the wrapper on each pallet and take each box by itself from the loading dock into the truck. And when the floor of the truck is a foot lower than the loading dock, oh my lord. But it's done. I'm gonna go home and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Probably see. I have to have it unloaded by tomorrow because I only had the truck for today and tomorrow. So by tomorrow afternoon I have to have it load unloaded. So um Oh my lord, it's not done yet. But hopefully it will be worth it in the end. You know that's how I see it okay it's it's a lot of work 
is a lot of shitty hard work. You sweat your ears. I'm sweating my ass off. And I have a freaking truck where the AC comes and goes um, depending on the uh, road and the uh, engine. If I get up a hill, if I go up a hill, the AC goes off. If I drive steady and constant speed, flat or downhill, the AC comes back on. And if you know Mississippi, it's all about those rolling hills. So I barely have any freaking AC in here. Here he comes back. Nah, not good. Because I'm, I'm going upward. I'm going up a little hill here now, so and I have to like kind of like give a little bit more throttle. This is just so stupid. This just reminds me that next time I um, get a chunk of cash, I'm gonna buy myself one of these box trucks. Because that's really freaking needed. See, if I'm doing this one more time, or several more times, I'm not gonna rely on uh, either Uhal or Penske for, to get down there and back. I'm gonna get myself a proper truck that I'm gonna buy, and uh, that way I'm set. And now I'm up on top of the hill, let's see if the AC comes back. I'm sweating here. It's like a sauna. And I'm a little bit we're worried too, because three years ago, I suffered heat exhaustion. Almost a heat storm. Oh, they have come back. Um, so I, well, three years ago, I had a severe heat exhaustion. I ended up in the hospital for a while. And um, I'm just very worried about that when it gets so warm here now. And I'm doing all this. I'm drinking water and coke and all kinds of shit just to keep myself uh, hydrated. I think I'm going through like two cans of coke and eight bottles of water in the last hour or hour and a half and um, so because I don't want to end up with another heat exhaustion that, that's for sure because I think that's what started all my problems but I feel a little bit wonky so I'm gonna take it easy that's why I need this freaking AC to work so I don't want too many more rolling hills and um, I think I have about 200 and 18 more miles to go to uh, until I'm home and uh, I have to stop and get some gas. I see I'm down to quarter of a tank. So yeah, uh, but in the end, you know, with all the work, with all the money spent, of course I hope that in the end it will be worth it. Do I ever dream of selling 1,780 pedals Anytime uh, in a short period of time, nah. I probably have pedals for decades, you know? I probably have pedals that last me like 20, 30 years. I'll probably retire before I uh, sell the last one. But if I can sell a portion of it, I know the Black Widows, they will sell. So I will get my money back, what I have spent on the products and um, God, this truck. And the cost of renting trucks and gas and going down here and all that stuff. You know, all that stuff adds up. So I, I know the Black Widow's replacement baskets will sell and they will take care of that cost and my initial investment. But um, so the gravy and then the, the most of the profit will be in the, uh, the pedals. So if I can sell like 100 pedals this year, even if I sell 50 pedals this year, because I sell worldwide, and these pedal pedals, are they work with the uh, SA 100, 200, 300, and 400 from Trace Elliott. So on a worldwide basis, you know, I might be able to sell 50, 75 pedals this year. So that will give me a good good little profit. But, um, you know, you never know. But <laughs> done is done. I couldn't, the thing is, I couldn't just defend going down there with the cost and everything just to get some uh, replacement cones or baskets for the Black Widows. 
you know, the time it would take and all that stuff. So, uh, because the other stuff that I bid on, I got outbid it, and uh, I wouldn't want to go any higher, because, I, and I, the stuff that I bid on was kind of like, I tried to stay away from customer return stuff, because there was a lot of customer return, and um, I have, from experience, I know that when you deal with customer returns, yeah, it can be anything from shipping damage on the box or some cosmetic thing, but a lot of times there's a problem with the product. So I stayed away from that, and 75% uh, of the auction was that. So I bid on the newer stuff that was not customer return, and uh, but I got outbid on a few things that I bid on. So at the end, I just said, ah, well, I had to do something to defend because I had already won the, bas the auction on the baskets. So that's why I ended up with the uh, the pedals as well. So uh, I'll shoot a video when I arrive at my store. So until then, take care. Hi right, guys, day number two. Yeah, sweating like a freaking pig. Um, trying to get the U-Haul uh, truck unloaded. So, um, started one little pile right there. And let me see if I can do this right. Oh, let me see. I'm blocking the camera. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it, guys. But, uh, I have to try not to block myself in. Uh, let's see out here. As you can see, there's a chock load of stuff still in there. Problem is, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to put everything. <laughs> oh. So when that is done, and I get everything in here, um, then, then I can start uh, cutting up the boxes. Well, not cutting up, but opening up the boxes and uh, take out the individual boxes and put them on shelves. I just have to get stuff in here now. Oh, it's only like what nine thirty, ten o'clock in the morning, and it's already like 90 degrees out there, and it's going to be like 96, 97 today. So it's almost going to be as hot as yesterday. So I picked the two wrong days because tomorrow it's going to be in the mid 80s with a breeze. Well, it's going to be a breeze today. It's going to be like 10 miles an hour wind. So that helps a little bit, but not much because the humidity is going to be up in the 80s. So uh, it's already in 74% humidity. And as the day goes by and the afternoon comes along, it's going to be even worse. So um, I had a guy scheduled to come here at 10 o'clock. It's about 10 minutes from now to help me. Uh, I hope he shows. Um, I promised to pay him like 40 bucks for a couple of hours. 20 bucks an hour is not bad. Um, so I hope he shows because I'm not even halfway done of unloading and I'm already freaking whooped. So um, I don't know what to do with all this stuff. <laughs> Besides trying to sell it. Um, I, like I said before, I probably have pedals, guitar pedals for the next 20 years. So I might as well look at it as a partial re retirement fund, I guess. Um, <laughs> Jesus, I tell you, being in the audio business, it's not glamorous as you think it is. It's a lot of a lot of work and it's a lot of hard work. And on that note, I have to say, and I have to give a big shout out and a big thank you for yesterday to Shane Brown at PV and Andy, he called himself Andy the Original from Mojo Tone for helping me getting this on the truck because I couldn't have done it by myself. I, because like you guys know, I got a heat exhaustion, almost like a heat stroke three years ago. And yesterday I was like this close. Once you've had it once before, you are very close to getting it very fast. 
So they helped me out and they did a fantastic job. I gave, uh, I gave all I could and they just jumped in and just, it was awesome. So they, they did really deserve a good, good credit for that. So if you are in the, um, in the market for something guitar wise, Look up Mojo Tone. They really deserve your business, and they are a really good company. And um, PV is a good company as well, you know. And they 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 make good products, and um, especially their old stuff is really really good. Um, but there's another video coming too, uh, where I'm gonna do some reflections on what I saw yesterday, and what I what I heard, and not good not good at all and i i can't believe it i i i was flabbergasted i was shocked i was it kind of made me mad in a way but um that's for another video once i get all this stuff taken off the truck and a couple of days to <clears throat> come around but yeah there's going to be a a video about uh, something that i really really it really sh shocked me and it really pissed me off in a way uh, and I, I, I it just goes to show how much dedication some people put into things and they don't get the gratitude back or they they don't get recognized for it and to me that is just plain freaking wrong if you have people working for you and they work their ass off day out and day in for years. They deserve the recognition. They do, they des deserve to be rewarded, and they deserve to have plain basic things. Okay, um, but what I saw was not good. So I'm gonna make a video about that. Um, so stay tuned. Um, I'm gonna jump back on my dolly and. Do I, I counted the boxes that are still on the truck and I do my dolly I um, use my dolly here and I stack them on because my dolly is not that doesn't have a deep bottom I have to stack them on on side so I do two boxes at a time and I counted the boxes on the as best as I could on the truck and if I do two on the dolly each time I have another 80 trips up and down that truck <laughs> so um, and that's just for the pedals then the recon kits comes on top of that because that's in the back and I can't even get to that but the the recon kits I can carry like five boxes at a time so that that's like five or six or seven trips or so but so that's not a big big dealy and they don't weigh much but these 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 things here let me show you something guys the way they're packed There is 10 in each box. The, um, the weight is 23.2 kilograms per box. That's roughly around somewhere between 39 and 40, well, between 38 and 40 pounds per box. Now, multiply that with about 300 boxes. Well, 250 boxes. Because there was a little bit more than what they they expected. There was like, I think they had counted wrong when they they started the auction because there is more than seventeen hundred and eighty pedals there, because there's ten in each box, and with all the boxes that are here, we're closer to like twenty two hundred pedals. So um, I don't know what they did, but that's even better for me. I think it was like I think I came to I think I counted yesterday. That was like 2200, 22, was it 2260? I think it was. You know, that's almost 500 more pedals. That's four, 13, 14 more boxes. 15 more boxes. 150. No, oh, there's more. Shit. I got a lot more. And they sent me an email. You know, this always happened. I, I kind of had a, a feeling about it. This always happens. They sent me an email last night saying that there is, and there's a bunch of it, there is um, at least 150 lots 
that hasn't been picked up or the credit card, the credit card that was given was declined. So now they have to resell that. So out of the five, 600 lots, there's like 150, 160 lots that failed payment. And so now they have to resell it. And they sent me an email yesterday and say, hey, can you give us a best offer on some of this stuff? So I gave them best offer on four different lots, um, totaling 47, 480, 360. Well, it's, I, I, I think I, it's almost like 900, almost 900 PV woofers and speakers, like draw, uh, drivers, new in boxes. So I gave them an offer on that, and if, I, if they accept it, then I have to go back down there and get that too. Uh, I need a bigger store. So, okay guys, let me get back to work and when I'm done, I'll make a video and um, this video has to be kind of like edited or just put together or something. Um, so, um, talk to you soon. Okay, so I'm finally done. Everything has now been uh, put in and um, it goes way, way, way back there. And... Uh, that's not all. And it goes way, way back there too. Let me see if I can give you a, a point of view that shows you. So I'm finally done. Got it all in. Here are some of the Black Widows. The 15s. I sold a bunch of them already. So they've been put back in the packing area. And I also have some smaller uh, PV, not Black Widow, but some PV drivers. Eight or nine of them. They were in a, like a box. I they were in a box that were open. I thought it was one of these, but there was speaker drivers in them. <laughs> so, um, I think they're Blue Marble 8 inch or something like that. Uh, but I have a guy that wants the Blue Marble stuff, so I can just ship that out to him. But I hope this stuff sells. Like I said earlier in the video, there's about somewhere around, somewhere between 23, well, somewhere between 22. 2260 and 2340 have I come to in in pedals that's a lot of pedals I tell you and I was supposed to open my store um, next week what the heck do I do now I was gonna have a reopening next week but a lot of this though a lot of these boxes well, I will open a lot of them and take out the individual ones. And, um, like I have done, with, there's some loose ones like that. Um, there's more of them, like eight or nine of those loose ones. Um, so I'll take them out to the loose, loose like this. And in the back here, I am now in the process of setting up five shelves, metal shelves that can hold 700 pounds each so a lot of this will d be taken apart and and stacked in individual boxes like that um so um it will get out of here at some point but i think i have to postpone the uh store opening a couple of weeks and um get this under control first i can't bring people in here with this stuff standing all along and just have a little narrow pathway um so um let me do like this yeah i took my ball cap off i'm tired i'm exhausted and uh, i have to sweat, change my t-shirt and um look here here's one The wire, the cable, and in here is the the uh, the pedal. I'll I'll 
I'll take some photos or some videos of them later on. Um, would I do it again? If the lot was smaller, if it was half the size, yes. Would I, would I, I hope that I could have, you know, I bid on other stuff too. And I hope, I was hoping that I could get that, but I got outbid. And when you do, because when you do auctions, you can't just go bananas and bid on whatever you want. You have, it has to be financially worth it. Because you can't buy it for cost and then have a huge labor cost and overhead surrounding the removal, the loading, the unloading and, and transporting. Because if I didn't do this myself, this would have been easy six to seven thousand dollar shipping cost with any courier. Because uh, I called around earlier for only a couple of, not for this, but for a couple of pallets. And it was like from here to Dallas, which is only like a five and a half, six hour drive for two pallets. And that was like almost a thousand bucks. This was 11 pallets. Uh, 12 with a pallet with the Black Widows. Um, so I had to do it myself. And you know, it took, it, it's take, it taken two days, two full days. And um, of course I had truck rental uh, gas, food, drinks on the way up and down, all kinds of stuff like that. So you have to kind of like, you can't go gung-ho when you bid on stuff at auction. Um, so you have to at least give yourself at least a 40% profit margin after everything is counted for. And then when I say I have everything, I mean the, the purchase price, the overhead around it and everything like that, labor cost. You know, if I had a couple of guys working for me, that would have probably easily been like two or three hundred bucks uh, in labor cost as well. So um, I, when I do auctions, I I uh, I always look at the item, then I look it up. What does it sell for? What is the going price? Because that determines how much I can bid. And I I had set my high bid on five different other lots which was uh, some Celestian drivers, uh, guitars, guitar amplifiers and stuff like that. But it, it went a couple of hundred bucks, 250 bucks, most of them over what I had set. And my bids were not low at all. Um, one lot was like five guitars and I had set 600 bucks on it. Um, but it went for 850 and um, it, they worked, but they had some cosmetic things, and that's why they were auction, auctioned off because customers had returned them because they had some cosmetic flaws. So you have to sell them as is and with cosmetic flaws, which means you're not going to get close to new price. So you kind of have to look at and see, okay, what are those guitars selling for used? And that's the price that you have to go by. And if I could have gotten them for 600 bucks, I could have sold those five guitars for probably. A, 1500 bucks all together that would have made me a $900 profit but when it goes for um, well minus the overhead and the, the cost of course but when it go when, when we went for 850 uh, it only leaves you with like $650 and if you include the cost of work and all that stuff like I, like I said it's not worth it anymore and that's how small the margins are in this business uh, being like I said in being in the audio and music instrument business it's not as lucrative as people want it to be or they pretend it to be you are fighting for every dollar and and sometimes you can be lucky and you can find something or come across something that will give you a hundred percent profit but most of the time we're talking about profits in the 10, 15 and 20, 25% range. And when you, when you include the cost of running a business, it's very, very tight. So you, you have to be very careful. I was lucky with this lot. I was lucky with the, the Black Widow lots. Um, I'm probably going to make my money and get my money back and the profit and all that stuff from the Black Widow stuff. I am not counting on this, the pedals 
to be the main profit maker or getting my money back and all that stuff, getting my investment um, back and, and, and all the cost. But so I look at the Black Widow as the money maker, and then this is the bread and butter that comes on top. Like I said, I probably have pedals here for like 20, 25, 30 years. Um, so, um, see. Would I do it again? If the if the if the lot of guitar pedals were half the size, yeah, I could have done it again. But I it, I wish it was some. Then I wish it was like a maybe like a lot of various or different types of pedals, not just one model, but different types. So you have you can spread out a little bit. Now I have to target the people who owns the TA. 100 the ta 200 the ta 300 and the ta 400 from trace elliott that because i don't think these are compatible with other uh, guitar amps unless you do some modification to the wire and maybe some setups or some chips but i, I don't know i'm just talking from what i think because these are not um jacks or xlr cables these are uh six or seven or eight pin dean cables so it's a little bit different but um it will be okay you know you you don't get anywhere either if you don't risk something and this was a risk it was a big big thing um hold on it was a big thing to do it's a big undertaking but you never know I might get lucky and sell 400 pedals over the next year and if I can do that and let's say the average price on the pedal is on 100 bucks you know I'm, I make good money so you never know you just have to take some chances sometimes and I haven't taken many chances lately so I, I was thinking this is one chance that I want to take because I don't I don't one I didn't want this opportunity to, to, to pass me and I knew that the Black Widow uh, baskets will be okay but I also thought maybe well maybe when I was looking at it you know the price I paid for the pedals are ridiculously low and uh, so I was thinking okay if I buy these pedals I can get it for two two fifty you know if you take 250 bucks i think it was i paid for all these pedals 1800 pedal there was 1800 pedals listed but there is more there's like 22 or 23 or something but let's say 2000 just to make the numbers easy when you pay like 250 bucks for two 2000 pedals it it it's it makes sense in a way even though there's a lot of work so um and just because I bought it cheap doesn't mean I'm going to sell it rock bottom either because then I'm destroying my own market. But I'm not going to charge some of these new pedals today. If you go on eBay and you look up Trace Elliott new pedals, they're like two, 250, 300 bucks for these pedals. So if I put half price on that on these on, online, let's say I can sell, let's say I can push three or 400 pedals within a year. That would be great. So. Where, you know, sometimes you just have to take a chance. Sometimes you have to walk away. And sometimes you have to take a big risk. I I feel that this was too good to walk away from. But it was something that you have to take a chance on. The risk is not high. For the price I paid, it's not that high. I, I, I mean, if I have to put this in the back and store it for 20 years... And let's say I sell five or ten pedals a year. Uh, selling five pedals, ten pedals a year, I have already got my money back. So I see it as a long-term investment that maybe I can supply people. Because you have to think about this too, and this is how I thought about it. Most of the time, it's not the guitar that breaks down. It's not the guitar amplifier that breaks down most of the time. The most times people change out stuff, is pedals and when some people sell used amps they have misplaced the pedal so they sell the amp to someone else and the other 
the new owner was like, oh shit, there's no pedal. I have to go online, see if there's a pedal there. And what do they want to buy? Do they want to buy a used one for a hundred bucks? Or do they want to buy a brand new one for 129? I'm just throwing out numbers there. You know, so you have to look at it that way too. So I think it will be okay, but it, it's a lot of work. And like I said, this business is not glamorous. 90% of the time you work your butt off, you work your ass off and it's painful. It's really painful right now. I feel like my arms have been stretched like 10 feet because you have to remember there's about roughly a, right around somewhere between 3000 and 3500 pounds of pedals that I have moved from out there in here and I did some yesterday too so you work your butt off so it's not hunky dory even if you get it delivered to your door it's delivered to your door if you have a ramp it's delivered to your ramp you still have to lift this shit you still have to pick it up you still have to place it you still have to store it you still have to deal with it and i tell you three thousand to four thirty five hundred pounds of gear when you lift that in a span within four out three and a half four hours yeah not glamorous it's not cloud nine it's not a pink world it's not oh yeah it's all about the freaking money no it's not all about the freaking money it's all about the work that you do to make a little bit of money and that's what people don't understand but that's okay and uh, that's why the weak ones falls off they don't do anything and that's why the ones that have the drive and the knowledge and the, the will they keep on plugging on and that's the difference between making it and not making it so I think I've done my part now I'm gonna take the truck back to U-Haul I'm just waiting for the, the someone that can pick me up at U-Haul to bring me back here because I have both my truck and the U-Haul truck here so I need a ride back but uh, after that I think I'm done for today uh, I have a headache I have my legs aches my arms ache my shoulder aches and I need a freaking shower so uh, until next time this was the last thing of this video I'll try and splice all these four or five segments together so when you see the video it's one so thank you for watching See you next time.